Despite encountering much resistance from world leaders and his own government, Obama's not yet backed down from his plan to attack Syria. In fact, after Congress votes, he's slated to address the nation to continue to make his case to go to war. And of course, the arbitrary red line of chemical weapons use has been this administration's main factor in moving forward with military strikes. But forgive me for asking the obvious question. Why is the use of chemical weapons a reason to bomb a country after over 100,000 lives have already been lost in a two-year bloody civil war? Moreover, what gives this country the moral authority to intervene in nations that use chemical weapons when the U.S. is responsible for some of the worst chemical weapons attacks in world history? Think back to just a few decades ago. Between 1962 and 1971, the American military sprayed about 20 million gallons of Agent Orange over 12% of Vietnam to allegedly pull the enemy out of hiding in forested land and deprive them of their food supply. But as former president of the National Lawyers Guild, Marjorie Cohn, explains, the U.S. didn't quite take a targeted approach to the use of that chemical. The landmass was sprayed with no distinction between uh, troops and and the, and civilians and certainly uh, millions of civilians were affected and so that is a violation of the Geneva Conventions. Unfortunately, because of the blanket spraying of Agent Orange, this toxic chemical still has devastating effects on the country today, including contaminated farmland and extensive birth defects from cancer to babies being born without brain cavities. And so far, there's been zero compensation allotted to the Vietnamese still adversely affected by this poison. But that's just one tragic example. Believe it or not, the government has also overseen the use of chemical weapons against civilians within the borders of its own country. One just has to go back a mere 60 years to the city of St. Louis, Missouri, in Corpus Christi, Texas, where the U.S. military engaged in Cold War experimentation on its residents. Yes, during the 50s, the Army waged a secret war on its own population by spraying something called zinc cadmium sulfide on the most impoverished residents of St. Louis. According to documents later released in the 90s, the Army placed sprayers on the top of old buildings and station wagons, exposing unsuspecting people to hundreds of pounds of toxic military-grade chemicals. Worst part, the military even used the fear of the Cold War to keep the people in the dark. City officials were kept in the dark about the tests. The Cold War cover story was that the Army was testing smoke screens to protect cities from a Russian attack. I can see the press release now. Don't worry, guys. We're just trying to build a cloak to shield us from Russian nukes. All right? So stop asking questions. Or what about in more recent history, like in 2009, when several human rights groups learned that Israel was spraying Palestinians in Gaza with white phosphorus? Sabah received these burns when an Israeli round slammed into her home in Beit Lahian, northern Gaza, a round that shows all the signs of containing white phosphorus. It completely burned the children, recalls Sabah. From head to toe, the house was in flames. Her husband and four of her children died in the attack. So, where was Obama's call then for striking Israel? Oh, wait. I forgot the apartheid state and human rights abuser, Israel, aka U.S.'s closest ally, can do no wrong. And speaking of white phosphorus, turns out that the U.S. liberally dropped this chemical in Cindy in Iraq during its occupation. This is a chemical that burns to the bone, but it's not nearly as lethal as depleted uranium, otherwise known as DU. Another chemical weapon used gratuitously during the Iraq war, justified as a protective shell casing for ammunition. The use of DU has undoubtedly left thousands of Iraqi babies with birth defects, even years after U.S. soldiers have left the country. After the Iraq war, rates of cancer, leukemia and birth defects rose dramatically in Najaf. The areas affected by fighting saw the biggest increases. We believe it's because of the illegal weapons like depleted uranium. At the hospitals here, cancer is more common than the flu. Cancer more common than the flu. I guess when you're talking about a highly radioactive substance that has a half-life of four billion years, we should only expect that trend to continue. So, remind me again why chemical warfare is Obama's reason to attack Syria? Yeah, that's what I thought.